Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So as you guys know, I'm always scouting for them small ships gone wild, and if you've got one on the workshop, there's a very good chance that I'll hunt it out, and if I enjoy it, then I'm going to have a look at it and probably feature it on the channel. So here is the Odidius, and it's created by Grodzi. It is an absolute beautiful ship. Now, the exterior is nothing too special, you may be thinking. Oh, it's just a square box sort of shape. But let's actually have a look at some of the details on the outer side. And then we'll go on the inside. That is a real exciting surprise. So you've got some little viewing windows. It's always nice on your ship to actually have a way of looking in and out. And you've got these sort of nacelles that look like they could almost be pulled out the side of the ship, maybe with a large sort of fuel rod aboard or something else. They could even be escape pods. You'll leave your mind to make that up. Now, as we pull up onto the top of the ship, you'll notice we've got a number of Gatling gun turrets. And we've got a very sort of standard boxy design. And he's really made good use of that by putting the solar panels on top for that extra bit of power. And the sort of sunroof vents that look into some of the rooms you can see here. But still a very sort of boxy light design and you can see we've got the sign beautifully lit up here and a nice little view into the cockpit but we'll have a look at that a bit more detail shortly now this is one of my favorite parts of the outside and it really inspired me to possibly do one of these on my own ship this is a little bit of a radar dish array and you can see as it spins away and into the sun it's got a really sort of simple sort of vented sort of design with that antenna in the middle with these little bleepers flashing away on both sides just looks absolutely beautiful now, conventionally, you'd get in a ship from behind, but this is a more sort of modern sort of merchant ship, and you can see that the entranceway is located on the front. And you see the door coming down really nicely. So as the door lowers down, it's using a two-stage sort of hinge system. So you could possibly drive up a vehicle of your choice into here, into this rather small cargo bay, but there's still enough room for a small buggy or rover if you're exploring a planet in the future. Really cool. Let's seal that door back up. So you can see as we raise that door, the hinges are actually hinging back up, and then you'll hear this pressure lock and clamping in three, two, one, and there we go. You see the clamp clamps that in, so it's nice and secure as you're trying to fly the ship away. We've got a few cargo bits of storage in this area. We've got a cargo crate with a capacity limiter on the side, so you can see what if it's full, if you can drop off your supplies quickly in there. And we've also got access to the airlock system in here. Now the buttons are really detailed in the ship. He's got things for the lights on and off, so we can turn the lights off in this area. Now we're not in there. We've also got an alarm in case someone's breached the ship. You can signal to the rest of the crew members with the alarm. So if when VoIP or something gets put into the game, you'll be able to have a much more interesting experience. Now, the airlock here works very smoothly. You can see we've got some little storage areas for our suits. So when we come into this area, we could take our helmet off, but I'll put it back on for simulation purposes at the moment. And we're gonna actually activate the airlock. So air is now being pumped into this room around us through these little air vents you can see down here in the floor. Now the pressure is stabilized and we can actually enter the compartment of the ship so we'll take our helmet off as well now from the outside this ship looks really big but once you get inside you can see the reason for that now we've got these very sort of square blocky corridors with these doors in and these are a number of different crew quarters so as you can see here we go through these different areas we'll open up each of the rooms and you see these are very sort of simple crew quarters i believe it's made for seven crew members and you've got a little bit of extra space for some extra people as well now this engine room is just everything that I like in a good engine room. So we'll turn the light on in here and you'll see this place actually power up. You've got these really cool sort of reactors, but he's not just finished them with there. He's actually connected them up with pipes and connected them into the wall and added these central sort of uh, cylinders as well as all these timer blocks at the back that start flashing. And all these buttons do have a purpose. So I'll actually go in here so you can see we've got an oxygen generator button. And I believe these are more oxygen generators on this side as well as an assembler that is located there. You can see that the oxygen generators are turned off. The assembler is currently set to idle. And you can see, press the button above uh, to ac activate the generator. So as you come in here, I believe this is the reactor. So we can actually turn these reactors on, power that reactor up. We can power them also from the cockpit, so I'll just leave that disabled for the moment, so I'll power it up later. Now, coming over here, you can see the oxygen tank actually storage of all three oxygen tanks, plus they're connected up below as well, so you can see the percentage of the oxygen aboard each one. Just a really interesting and detailed engine room. You've also got the statistics of the ship and these really cool sort of hood overlays. Hopefully in the future, they'll allow us to actually put these detailed graphics that actually give us outputs of what the ship is actually doing rather than just aesthetics at the moment but you can see we've got some time zone information as well as power status there now let's continue on and we'll head upstairs i miss this little med bay on the wall there as well 
so we're heading up the sort of interesting looking staircase that rotates around to the next floor. Now on this floor, there's quite a few things. We've got the bridge, we'll have a look at that in a minute. We've also got a lovely little space toilet here that features cool little things like a light, of course. You've got the brush down there at the bottom and the sort of toiletry. You've also got a lock for the door so you can lock this from inside and you also have the alarm so if someone breaks into you while you're on the toilet, just hit this alarm button and off it goes, warning everyone on the ship that you've, you've, either, you've either done a very bad toiletry disaster <laughs> or someone's broke into the ship. So if we continue through here, we have one of the first sort of kitchen lounge eating rooms. So let's turn the kitchen light on. We also have the living room light we can turn on there. Just very detailed, very sort of relaxing. It's like a very realistic sort of space and we've got some sort of fake fish tank there as well. The kitchen is located here. You've got a little sink light. Like little details like this really get me like just to turn on that. Oh, beautiful. And as we head over here, we've got a little sign. Today's menu eat it or starve and I guess you could store your food in these areas below so let's actually turn off this lighting area we've got some more sound systems there for a bit of blasted music we'll turn the alarm on there we go alarms working and we'll turn both the lights off in this area now across the hall is what I can only guess is the sort of entertainment slash command room so we'll, we'll turn the light on in here now there's party on this side of the room and there's sort of serious command stuff going on on this side. So it's a little bit confusing. You've also got a mini bar in the middle, so you can go straight from work to play. But I'll show you the sort of working area at the moment. Now this is a hologram sort of navigation system, and I'll show you exactly how it works. So it gives you a little bit of information how to do it, but I've already read it. So you stand on this square, and you turn the holy nav on, and it'll take a second to start up. You'll see a nice blue light there and the hologram will show you a planet circling another planet. Now, obviously, this is just like a, a setting in the moment, but it looks really cool. You can see it could possibly give you some information about the planet that you're going to visit. And you've also got the screen on and off, so you can turn that off on and off at the side. And you've got the previous planet, so it'll cycle to another planet in the solar system. And we've got the next planet as well. So that's just a really cool little idea for a system, and hopefully in the future, you might be able to actually really project your planets or whatever's out there onto this screen maybe with some sensors and cameras that'd be cool anyway let's step back one step and i believe that will go off you can also turn it off with this menu there as well so really cool let's move on to the party area now the bar looks like it's been completely cleared out these pictures here are just clear to annoy the crew members but this this is quite exciting we've got lights on in this area so you can turn the lights down low you've also got play music that i'm not going to play just in case it's a copyrighted track but I'll play it anyway. There we go. Smooth jazz will de be deployed. Oh god. Uh, so the hologram on and off. What's this do? Oh, so you can have like a nice sphere in the middle. It feels a bit Star Wars esque that sphere, doesn't it? With the could get a possible lightsaber and fight it. Anyway, let's head out of that room before. Oh, oh sugar, are we locked in? I thought we were locked in. <laughs> the smooth jazz room. That'd be a bad way to end the video. Now, as we head up to this area, did I check show the rest of the corridor? I did, didn't I? Oh no, I didn't. We have actually got the captain's quarters. That is that door over there, and we have a sort of shower slash bathroom. We've got some different sorts of soap and material on the side here, and we also have the shower. Very cool. <laughs> let's head over to this area and see the captain's room. Now the captain's room's here, we'll actually quickly trigger the light that's on that side of the door. If I can press it with my hand, there we go. We've got a nice little shelf so you can hang up all your nice shirts that the captain probably has. And you've got a bed for you to lie down as well as a place for do to do captain's log. And I believe this has a little bit of a light on the desk as well. Really cool, really smooth. I love all the details that people put into these small ships gone wild. But let's go to the cockpit. This is where some of the coolest ideas. Now this will inspire you all the way this is this is crazy station so you sit down at your station and this is a weapon station so bear that in mind we press one we're rotated into position weapon systems are activated we're clamped into the chair we've got some sort of target and array pop up on the right we've also got the gatling guns turned on and off at that side so we can actually access the gatling gun then and start to engage targets really cool and if we turn it off weapon systems are disabled and the chair turns around just so cool and it's got a repeat of that for another gunner station on the other side we've got two smaller stations that don't really do too much with a little bit of a light switch behind as well as the captain seat well at least you've got two sort of pilots or captain seats you could say and they work the same again you press one it rotates you around i believe button two is actually for the middle screen so let's lower them down and turn them on Okay, middle screens are activated. The controls are listed down here on the left as well, so that's pretty cool. 
We've also got the free controls of the Gatling turret, so let's access number three. Okay, so there we go. That's an, actually the antenna on and off. I was reading the second menu down. We've got control Gatling turrets, so if I select four, we should control it in the Gatling turret, and this is the one, I believe, on the front of the ship. So there we go, and we've got a rotor so we can turn this left and right. And let's quickly tick that off and get out of that menu. Now, if we go on to control panel two, that I think is only accessible from this chair. Could be wrong. We'll spin that around quickly. Um, or oh, maybe not. So if we access the remote control block, you can actually see we have much better control of the ship and we can actually engage. So I guess that one's like a co-pilot seat on the right. And this one is the actual proper seat to pilot this thing. So we'll go to number seven. Seven will disengage the landing gears and then we, rec we can retract them. Let's retract them. There we go. Retracted the landing gear. We also need to power up this ship so we don't have to look at the controls to power it up. So I finished moving around the rest of the ship, enabling all the systems. So we're actually clear for takeoff now. And you can see this massive ship is going to take a bit of velocity to actually get it moving. We've locked the front to go down. You can see the Gatling turret on the front. It's quite a big, vulgar, scary sort of merchant ship, this thing. So let's actually game moving forward and see exactly what happens oh this thing is cool I, d I just love it when small ships go wild and they've got so much detail it's just it's like a real sort of ship in my imagination the, the larger ships don't seem to ever manage to capture this much detail aboard a ship anyway i'd like to thank you guys for watching and make sure you check this out workshop really